What was the experience like on stage today, reflecting on the 15 years of television, which obviously you haven't been on the whole time, but your husband has, so it's been your life for that whole, you know, your family? Well, uh, you know, Brad and I were luckily on... Uh, First season... So- no, we wrote uh, one emergency script for them. Oh, emergency. They, they, had a, they, they, they lost a script. They needed a script in a week, and they had Eric asked if we wanted to work as okay. outsiders. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Fair enough. But we really weren't involved at all emotionally with the show because um, we were working on other shows. So I, it, it wasn't really until we came on as consultant producers in the beginning in like season eight mm-hmm. that we sort of even got embraced by the. Supernatural fever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm not melancholy yet. I'm sure I will be. It's sad when it's over. But I, I think on the stage, I felt like uh, it was a, a great accomplishment to see this big community of fans and knowing that um, I, we did have real permanent friends with everybody on the show. It's, it's just really great. Um, I, think I, I felt like. The odd thing that I get flashing back on is when Eric first came to meet Bobby and and they were deciding if they were going to do the show together. Because Eric had created it, but he needed a show again. And so he, he and Bobby had multiple meetings. And uh, I sort of stayed in the background. I had my own life. I didn't care, but this guy would come in and out of our house. <laughs> and I think, it was, how hard is it to decide? You, know, yeah. you, you guys either like each other or you don't. But they had multiple meetings at the house, and then Eric was leaving, and I didn't even know this guy. And he was very young. And he was young and, and kind of shy, and you know, and very, very mannerly and very sweet, but very retiring. And I thought, well, someone's going to eat him up. You know? <laughs> and then they got they married. They had this good relationship as partners, and uh, like we really respect each other. Took this leap of faith. But I thought that. And so here I am, I'm Paul age million people, and it's all these lights, and there's this accumulation of goodwill and, and loyalty. About the show, that was just in my living room, like 15 years ago, these two guys were just talking to me about, do oh, you think we should do this together? Do you think you can work with me? Do you think I can, do you think we can respect each other? What's your story? What's my, you know, it just started out as like this little idea, and then it became this thing in record time. So I'm actually pleased and touched by that, the art of that story. Because I think it's a very personal story that I'm just lucky to have been on the inside of, just as a little observer, and, and seeing how much Eric grew as a very dynamic, confident, creative showrunner, and that he's such a good relationship with Bobby. I thought that was that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Speaking of Eric, is there going to be any opportunity for him to come back and write an episode or be involved in the final season? I don't think he. No. He. I know he and Bobby are having dinner this week. I think Eric is so busy, he's doing another series. Yeah, he's doing boys, and he's, yeah, he did time, he's all over the place. And he's busy, you know, he does, yeah. it's not like he doesn't take the work seriously, so he's, he just has a limited amount of stuff, and I think he, he's just very comfortable with who's doing the show now, so I don't think he, I don't think he has unfinished business. Good, that's good. I'm reading his mind, I don't yeah. know. I know there's a point for all of us as fans where the show became something truly special and, and not just a, a genre show for us. Do you remember what point it was where you noticed that the, the fan base was, tr- was truly loyal and really loved this show more than, more than just viewers of the news? Um, I think I came really late to that party because um, I think I came up here on a, some jobs. I don't know what. I wasn't on the show. I think I came up some event, and I just saw the enormity of the fans here, and which you know, is not the same in L- L.A., you know, L.A. is a little more, well, it's just more diffuse, I mean, more shows, but it, it, there was something about the Canadian thing, that they were just going crazy, and then, I was visiting my cousins who live in Paris, and we were having a family reunion in this tiny little Chinese restaurant in a suburb of Paris. And it was like a really rinky think restaurant. And I was going to ask him, my cousin was at the front desk talking to this older Chinese man, the proprietor. And they were very, very engaged in the conversation. I went by, I came back, and my cousin called me over and he said, Eugenie, this is Mr. Chen. 
Mr. Chan is from China, has been living in Paris for 30 years. He's a devoted fan of Supernatural. He found out was, he could not, he couldn't be beside himself. And I thought, well, that's, I thought, what an oddity. Well, then we went to, we were in Africa, and we were, and I was sitting in a restaurant, and this bus boy came over in Cape Town, and oh, just kept saying it, and he knew everything about the show. He knew stuff I didn't know. <laughs> And then we just started going to more conventions, and I realized the conventions really nailed it. This is like a phenomenon that I just didn't get. I was the last person to get. So I just saw it as an intimate, cleverly produced, um, you know, fastidiously done show with really good people on board. And I found out it had this international energy that just blew my mind. We had to stop at airports. We had trouble getting on a plane once in Paris. And they... They said, she saw my name on the ticket. She said, did you do the She said, oh, I'll get you on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> does, does that loyalty make you feel like more pressure about what you owe to the audience to finish up this epic story? No, because it tells me we've done it right so far. And if we don't betray our own worth ethic, work ethic and we stay true to the work we've done, some people will be disappointed. Some people's feelings will be hurt. Some people will say, well, I thought that's not my fantasy of how it should end. But it won't be dishonorable. We will have respected everybody, including our own work. So I don't feel too bad. No. Thank you.